Hi, I'm Robin, and this is my ship container home on wheels, and I'm currently in the city of West Sacramento, California. I've been living in my tiny home uh, for about five years now, five years this month. It's built out of a 20-foot ship container, and it's 160 square feet. I never had too many ideas about the tiny home. I didn't research it too much. I just knew someone who built them out of shipping containers and I was like, that's perfect, I'll take that. <laughs> and of course, as I've lived in this for almost five years, you know, the tiny home movement has grown so much. I've seen so many different ideas. I've seen so many different shipping container builds, um, which is why in the future I do have different ideas of how I'd want to rebuild, essentially. I was originally on my sister's property for about four years towards Elk Grove in California and I had just seen this beautiful parcel um, of a piece of raw land in the city of West Sacramento and I just decided to buy it and park on it. It's just under a quarter acre and it is um, zoned as a residential property so I'm in between a couple of residential homes and my neighbors are awesome. <laughs> And there's no utilities to the property. I'm parked here off-grid and illegally. <laughs> it is civil disobedience. It is a way to be completely transparent with your local government, with your local community, your neighbors. Educating them on what you're trying to do, I think, is super important as well. I wrote letters to all my neighbors. I've posted on apps welcoming my neighbors to take a tour of my home, to talk to me. I've had nothing but support and interest in what I'm trying to do. And honestly, a lot of people that work in my local government support what I'm trying to do. It's just trying to navigate how to do it, where to start, um, having this as an example uh, for the whole community, for the city, uh, and for the Sacramento region. As far as I know, this will be the first legal tiny home residential property in the region. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Once we get there, eventually. It's a long process. It's a long process. I'm not willing to say, yes, I'll do whatever you want. I am willing to have conversations about options it's mainly about affordability. Um, I understand not everybody's ready for compost toilets. Not everybody is ready for all these off-grid options and all these, you know, alternative materials and things like that. Not everybody's ready for wheels, you know. There's, you know, superficial discriminatory things about our zoning laws as well. So we just have to keep pressing and asking those questions and educating our community about, um, you know, what's been happening um, with our housing policy, with our housing, affordable housing shortage. One of my neighbors lets me rent water monthly, which super kind. All my neighbors ask for updates. What's going on with the city? What's going on? Everybody has been nothing but supportive. Yeah, so I like to sit in this area in my hammock and drink coffee or check my emails. I work remote, so um, I'll sit on my computer out here. I've got this hooked up to my rig. This is really my aerial rig, but um, I have my hammock there now. These are the original shipping container doors. I really wanted to keep the original shipping container doors just so I could feel like this was a bigger space and to let more light in, to let more air in. It really makes the space feel a lot bigger when they're open, which is nice. So on this other side of the shipping container is where I have my solar unit and my gas. I have my water heater, my air conditioner, and then my, my ladder that goes up to the roof and where my solar panels are and uh, my aerial rig, all that stuff. My gas line, something's not working and I'm actually not sure why. I've been out of town and I haven't figured it out. It was like right before I left but I have various solutions when things go wrong, like camping gear and things like that. This is very similar to glamping, so you just kind of adapt and figure it out. So that's pretty much it for the outside. Now I'll take you on inside. Welcome to my home, my shipping container home. 
definitely feel at home in this space. It, it puts me in a better mood. It's bright, it's airy, it's my place of calm, of peace. When I was designing this, I really wanted it to be really bright and open, as many windows as possible. The French doors um, and then the original shipping container doors, when both those are open, it's amazing and airy and bright and I love it. So it's a 20 foot shipping container and only 160 square feet, but I never feel like I'm living in 160 square feet. I don't feel like I'm living in a tiny box because it's so bright and airy and I can open everything and feel like I'm outside sometimes. Open those doors and I feel like I'm sleeping outside <laughs> with my bed right here next to the doors. So I never feel like I'm trapped or like it's a small space ever. And on this side of the container uh, by the original shipping container doors is my built-in bed. Um, with storage for my clothes underneath with big drawers underneath. I would like to eventually remove this built-in bed and put in a couch with a pull-out bed just to have more space. This has served its purpose but now I would like to change it up eventually. So there's some storage on the other side when you open the shipping container doors. There's some little storage areas. So all underneath this is storage. And now that I'm on my own property, I can store things outside when I originally couldn't. Over here actually was a table that came up. I just, I rarely used it, so I actually took it out. And this was my dog, Rupert. He's been my inspiration for a lot of things. I have my dog Ruby now, but Rupert passed away a few years ago. So this is kind of his little, you know, memorial area. <laughs> and then this was my dad um, who passed away a few years ago and he thought I was crazy for living in a tiny home. <laughs> and he never got to see this space, but I think he would be proud now, <laughs> I think. Who knows, maybe he'd still think I was crazy, I don't know. <laughs> Um, so this is my mini split heater air conditioner it works really well I mean it's it's more power and more air that I could ever need for this space honestly so this is my kitchen over here I have a gas stove and I use just regular gas and it's located on the outside on the other part of the shipping container and my sink I have plenty of storage I have um, more than I need, really. This was one thing that I wanted, was to have light coming into the kitchen. I didn't want just pure cabinets. The more I think about it, I, I'd want less cabinets as well. I just, the less stuff, the better. Um, I think when you have more drawers, have more cabinets, have um, more storage, you tend to fill it up more than if you kind of force yourself with less and less space, you have, you acquire less. So on this side of the kitchen, I have a little bit more storage. Um, I have my fridge, which is not working at the moment. I've been off grid for a year and I've been working on the solar that I need, uh, the power that I need to power a fridge. So I haven't had a fridge for a year and it's actually been okay. It's not as dramatic as I thought. My friend let me borrow this and I've been using that uh, when I need to, but you just have to be, very mindful about what you buy, your food. I actually waste less. So on the other side of the fridge, um, this is a little more counter space. I'm glad that I chose to have this here because it's nice to have um, a separate counter space from the kitchen where you can set your bags, um, set your mail, just like a separate little space. And I have my little thing where I put documents and things more pictures of Rupert. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I chose to keep counter space for this area. I was not at all <laughs> aware of zoning, of housing policy, of the legalities, of how to get utilities to a property, uh, the process, the building process. I was unaware of all of that. I essentially started to just call local departments, building departments, um, I didn't even really know who to call. I was calling everybody. I probably talked to every department in the city of West Sacramento and Sacramento. <laughs> I had heard of, you know, permits and fees and things costing a lot of money, but I just was like, let me just wing it. Let me see what happens. And so when I did start to call around, I specifically was actually asking for 
um, if I could get access to water on my property. That was the one thing that I need because this is an off-grid house. I really just needed access to water. And they told me, no, <laughs> you can't just get access to water. And it snowballed from there. And I was like, just kept questioning, well, why? Why can't I just get access to water? Why can't I have off-grid options? Um, why can't this be a more seamless process? Um, just things like that. And it, it, it turned into, um, you know, homeless advocacy. It turned into housing policy advocacy, tiny home advocacy. I had no idea that this was not my intention at all. I, I had no idea how political it was going to get. I had no idea how political basic needs are, housing policy. I had no idea until I saw this property, until I moved here, until I educated myself, I got educated, I asked the questions, and then I realized how important it was. Impact fees alone in the city of West Sacramento are upwards of $50,000 and it's cash. Who are you saying you want to build in your city, who you want to live in your city when that's your only option? There's no payment plans, there's, there's nothing. The first thing I pushed for um, when they kept telling me no, um, I started a petition uh, for uh, imp proportional impact fees because um, that's essentially the biggest barrier are these impact fees. And I sent that petition to all the local departments and all of council and anyone I could think of. Then they seemed pretty interested. And so we did have quite a quite a bit of conversation about off-grid options and things like that they made it clear they're they're not ready for a lot of the things that i would like um, but proportional impact fees they were willing to uh, move forward with one of the other things that i was really fighting for was an impact fee payment plan because um, impact fees go to the overall infrastructure of your city and i just don't I think it's a priority issue. I don't think that people should have to pay for the these impact fees before they have access to basic needs because you essentially have to pay for that, do the permits, pay for all those other things before you can have access to water or sewer or whatever else they want you to hook up to. Now for a brief message from our sponsor, NordPass. Do you have trouble remembering things? I sure do. Like every day. And that's why I dig NordPass. It stores all my passwords in one place under tight cybersecurity lock and key. Do you rely on the ease of logging into new sites via your Facebook account? I'm guilty. But what if it was hacked? I'd be in a world of hurt. NordPass is such a secure password manager that no one but me, myself and I can see what's inside my very own encrypted vault. This may sound like it's tricky to use while surfing the web, but it's truly easy. NordPass syncs all your credentials and its autofill feature is a breeze for logins. And it safely stores all my personal deets and credit card info too. Perfect for safe online shopping. The cherry on top? With its data breach scanner, I can find out if any of my online accounts or credit card info has been leaked. Get exclusive access to NordPass's best offer with our linking code to get an additional month for free. Find both in the description below. And on the other side of the container is my bathroom. I actually had a sliding door before that I got rid of and I got this door, this corrugated door instead, which I actually really like better. I have a compost toilet since I live off grid. I don't have a sewer line to this property yet. It's one thing we're working on, but we'll see. Um, I have this cool kind of cabinet here that I had installed. It gives you extra space to work with. And then on the other side of the bathroom, I have my shower and my neighbor lets me rent water from him <laughs> for now. Before I lived in a tiny home, I lived in what I call my big house and it was just a regular 12 foot or 1200 square foot house. And my shower in that house was smaller than this one. Um, so it's kind of funny. So the last part I want to show you um, is how I access my outdoor storage through the shipping container doors. You got to have a little bit of muscle, just a little bit. They open up with this lever here um, and then they, they have a lever on each side um, and then you just kind of pull them open. I just keep kind of off season things, um, miscellaneous things, documents and things down here that I might not need often. And 
there was nothing covering the space when I when I opened these doors so I chose a dog pattern because I love dogs and I thought it was cute. <laughs> My home cost about 30000 It was a beta project, so I think it was a bit cheaper than normal. I bought this property at the height of the pandemic, actually, so it was not a bad price. I got it for about 62000 and I think it's only been two years. And again, with how crazy the housing market's been, I think it's gone up, you know, 30, 40%, which is just crazy to me. It's easier said than done. Everything's really expensive. Again, I started this journey like six years ago and I was able to afford it um, when I had bought my regular home, <laughs> my 1200 square foot home, um, when I sold that. I was able to buy this and then I mean I'm all about hard work I, I work quite a bit to be able to afford this vision and it continues to be a struggle that's essentially what I'm asking my government for me to be able to do is to please let me live within my means we kind of aren't allowed to live within our means we kind of have to take out these loans and these uh, mortgages and live in these bigger homes. That's just how the system has been. It's not that I don't believe in the current system or feel that it, it has housed a lot of people very comfortably for a long time, but now we need more options. We need more alternative materials. We need more alternative zoning and codes and those types of things so, so that we can live within our means. I've shared a lot on social media and I'm a fairly private person. Um, so sharing this part of my life, the details of the struggle and what's going on was hard to do. It still can be hard to do. I'm like, okay, I, I want people to, to see the journey and to see how hard it is, but the progress, the response I've gotten has been overwhelming and just how people want to share their stories with me. Um, has been really the best part. I don't want to cry. <laughs> if I start, I won't stop. <laughs> um, I've had people share how their family members are homeless. They've been homeless. Financial struggles, freedom struggles. That's what has kept me going. I could easily sell this, sell this property go live somewhere else where it would be easier. And actually my community development director of the city actually suggested that I do that. I was essentially told that I should leave. It's just sad. It is sad when you have people that work in your local government that actually say those things to you. It becomes very clear what's happening, that they either aren't that interested or it's too much work. A lot of times, especially in a lot of this policy, it's taken them years to develop this current system. It takes them to, to adapt it, takes a lot of time and energy as well. I'm aware of that. But that's why I'm patient. I'm here, I'm patient, I'm willing to be the example. I will adapt to your zoning, to your codes, I'll remove my wheels, I'll do all of that. Just make it affordable. And that's what I always come down to. Just make it affordable, please. <laughs> like. Yes for me, but you know, well, we gotta come up with a path. You know, I'm more than willing to be the example. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.